Last year, I captured over 10,000 email addresses on my e-commerce store. So now every time that I send an email to that list, I get an instant revenue boost. Now I don't need to spend as much money on ads. I can set up advanced email automations that allow me to make more money with less effort. So today I'm gonna to take you through how to set up the best pop-ups on your Shopify store using Klaviyo so that you can do the exact same thing that I did to get to 10,000 email addresses. I'm going to show exactly how to connect into Shopify, how to create and configure your pop-ups to get both email and SMS addresses, and I'm gonna also show you how to create a dynamic coupon code directly in Klaviyo. If we're just meeting for the first time, my name is Brendan Gillen and I'm a Klaviyo partner. I've been ranked top 50 in e-commerce three times now. I run my own seven figure Shopify stores and I'm on a personal mission to help people just like you start, grow and scale their e-commerce businesses by dropping videos just like this onto YouTube. Now to get started with this, we're going to be using Klaviyo as the tool to create the pop-ups and send our email addresses. Now I really like Klaviyo because it's been designed just for e-commerce. If we look at other email platforms like MailChimp or ActiveCampaign, they haven't been designed with e-commerce in mind. They've been designed to service all different categories. Whereas Klaviyo just thinks about e-commerce. And the other thing is it integrates tightly into Shopify, which means it can track everything that your customer does on your Shopify store and send that through to Klaviyo. Now, if you don't have Klaviyo set up, I urge that you do. Uh, and to make it easier for you to follow along in this tutorial, I've put a link in my description to get your free trial of Klaviyo. That one's on me. So now that you have Klaviyo installed, we're gonna go through and ensure that it's integrated into Shopify. So I've just jumped into my demo account here. If we click through and we click integrations, now if you have a brand new Klaviyo account, you're not going to see any integrations here. If you've already set this up, you're probably going to see a Shopify integration, so you can just fast forward to the next step. But for those that are brand new to Klaviyo, let's go through it here. We click add integration, and we're gonna search for Shopify. We'll click Shopify. And then we're just gonna go through all the steps that Klaviyo needs us to do. So just choose any list. I've got a couple here because it's a demo store, but choose one that you want your email subscribers from Shopify to go into. We also wanna sync our SMS subscribers here. This is really important because we want to capture phone numbers. We'll also select a list here. We go down, we make sure everything syncs straight through to Shopify. We keep all of this stuff selected, okay? All this here is by default, we don't need to change anything. And then we just go through and connect to Shopify. Now from there, Shopify and Klaviyo are gonna to talk to each other and connect so that anything that happens on your Shopify store is going to feed through to Klaviyo. And then anything that happens in Klaviyo is gonna feed through to Shopify. And what this allows us to do is track the behavior of our customers, as well as create the pop-ups and do all the things that we need to do to make sure that we get the best value out of these email subscribers. Now let's get to creating that pop-up. Over on the left-hand side, we wanna click sign up forms. And you can see I already have some set up here, but we're going to click create sign up form. And what we can see here, there's a whole heap of predefined templates that we can use. So you can either grab one of these or you can create one from scratch. And just for this demo, I'm just gonna use the multi-step email and SMS. It's gonna give us a good framework to start with. So in this pop-up here, it's saying, what do we wanna call this and where do we wanna send it to? So we're gonna call this uh, on-page pop-up. And let's send this to the same list that we chose Shopify to go to. And same with the SMS subscribers. Click create form. And now we can see a preview of what the pop-up is going to look like. So we're just gonna go through step-by-step step the ways that we can configure this. So over on the left, we've got styles. Now there's four different ways that we can create a sign-up form. One is the pop-up, which is what we see here. The next one is full page, where it goes across the entire page. We have a fly out, which slides in from the side, top, bottom. And then we have embed, which means that it gets inserted into the page on Shopify. Now the one we're gonna to choose today is pop-up. Now I like the test between pop-ups and flyouts. On some stores, pop-ups work better. On some stores, flyouts work better. Now what we want to do to see what works better on our store is we want to look at a stat called form submit rate. Now I'm gonna show you what that is after we've set up this pop-up and that's how you can test whether or not your pop-ups are working well or not working well. So we're gonna go down and choose the way that might look. So we can either have no side image, we can either have a left image, or we can have a right image. So it's completely up to you how you wanna do this and working with your brand styling. And if you wanted to add an image here, we just click on the image and then we can edit or replace the image here. Cool, so we can see that there, looks really, really cool. All right, let's go back and then go back to styles and we have a look here. We can see that we wanna show this either on all devices, desktop or mobile. Now in the old version of Klaviyo, what we used to do is create two different pop-ups, one for mobile and one for desktop. 
But now that Klaviyo allows us to do different behavior based on mobile and desktop, we don't need to do that. So we're just gonna have this show on all devices. So from here, we can go through and change all the styling, the way it looks, the colors, everything that suits your brand. So spend some time here and just make sure it looks really congruent with the look and feel of your site. We don't want it to look nothing like your site. It needs to have the same colors, the same fonts, everything like that. So once we've done that, we'll go back and we're gonna to go to targeting and behavior. Now this is where we decide when the pop-up comes up. Now, if you're like me, I hate hitting a site straight away and a pop-up coming up straight away because the first thing that I do is I just click X and close it off. So what I want you to do here, and this is one of the things that we did that increased our email subscribers, is we changed the way that the behavior and the targeting worked on the site. So in order to do that, we wanna click show based on rules. And then from here, we're going to choose different rules on the way we want this to show up. Now, one of the things that I really like is show after scrolling. What this means is the pop-up is going to show after someone has interacted with the page and that allows us to know that they're actually liking it and they just haven't landed on the page they're going to leave. If they're scrolling the page and having a look at things, it means that they're interested in what it is that we have to offer. So I like to do mine show after about 60% of scrolling the page because what that means is that they've scrolled the page 60% of the time and they're engaged with our store. The other thing that you could do is you could show when a visitor is exiting the page. And what this means is if they don't scroll to the 60% and they just go to go exit, it's going to pop up and give them the discount. And that can encourage them to stay on the page and increase your engagement. So we're going to do that. So let's ensure that one is checked. Now the other option here, which is show after a certain amount of seconds on page load, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, you can test it, but I like to not have it on at this stage because if someone has landed on your page but not done anything and in five seconds we pop it up, it's gonna be just as annoying as when it pops up when they land on the page. So let's not do that one. So let's scroll down and have a look at the next thing. It says, don't show again after submit form or go to URL action. What that's saying, if someone has filled this out, let's not pop up again for at least five days. This is fine, let's just keep this setting in here. The next setting is whether we show on all devices. Yes, of course we wanna do that. Now the next part is showing them how to dismiss the form and how to close it. So sometimes you can only close it with the X, but I really like it if you can close on the outside. So we want them to be able to close it really easily. Now, the reason we want them to be able to close it really easily is we don't wanna annoy them. So it's already annoying enough that we're putting a pop-up in the front of them. We don't wanna make it hard enough for them to get rid of it. So we can uh, click outside the form to close and that's just basically clicking around the edge. Now this one here is really interesting around targeting. We want to make sure that we don't show to existing Klaviyo profiles. And this is important because imagine someone signed up to this form, you've sent them an email, they've clicked the email, they've come back to the store, and then boom, a pop-up comes in. And they're like, well, I've already filled that out. So we don't wanna show this one to existing Klaviyo profiles. All right, now the next part is by URL, okay? So this means we could potentially only show this pop-up on certain URLs. Now this can be a really useful feature if you're sending people from ads or things like that. Now what we can also do is we can exclude from certain URLs that so we don't wanna distract them. And one that I really like to exclude them from is the cart. So imagine you're at the cart and you're sitting there and you're scrolling, you're about to exit for whatever reason, we don't want a pop-up to come in. So we want to click here, don't show on certain URLs, and we just wanna put the word cart in here. And that's going to exclude people that are on the Shopify cart. Now, if you want to only show to visit in certain locations, we can select it here. Or if you don't wanna show in certain locations, you can select it here. I just leave that open, especially if you're a global store. So now that the behavior is done and the pop-up style is done, we can go now and start editing the blocks. So if we click back here, we can see that we've got this section which is called add blocks. Now this allows us to add all different elements into it and it's super easy. We can just drag things across and it goes in here, nice and easy. And we can do the same thing by just trashing them if we don't want them in there. Let's delete that block. Now, because we used a template, a lot of this is already done. So what we want to do here is we want to edit this information. Now to give you a tip, the type of offer that I like to put in here has to be a pretty strong value exchange. People know the value of their email and phone numbers of these days. So we need to make sure that we're exchanging them the right reward for the information they're giving us. So think about this, if you sell products that are say $200 and you're giving them a $5 incentive, is that going to be great enough to buy something for $200 off your store? Probably not. I like to work on about a 10% value ratio. So if it's $200, we'd be giving them a $20 coupon code. If it is a $100 value, we'll give them a $10 coupon code, 50 and five. You see what I'm going with that? So what we want to do here is do a dollar value. So on this store, it's about a $60 product. So I'm gonna do a $5 coupon code. Get $5 off. 
Now, what you see here is rather than say, sign up to my newsletter for $5 off, we're just gonna be really super simple and succinct about what they get. So get $5 off. And then in this little section here, we're gonna give them a little bit more information about what we need them to do to get the $5 off. Uh, simply enter your email below and we will send you the code. So this is a really important message here. We don't want to say sign up to our newsletter to get the code. We want to just say, enter your email address here and we're gonna email you the code. So they are subscribing to the list, but they're doing it to get something, okay? So we got email here. And instead of continue, we're gonna change the text on this button here. This is a real ninja move. We're gonna change this text to be, uh, send me my coupon. Actually, you know what, $5 coupon. So we can see what that's doing there. That is a call to action and it means that they have put the email address in to get something in return, okay? So this means that they're gonna be expecting an email from you with the coupon code. This does a lot of things. This makes the form of submission rate a lot better. It also means that they're gonna go and check the email and it also means they're expecting an email from you, okay? That sends signals to Klaviyo to know that your emails that you're sending are good, you get a good open rate, and you get a good sender reputation. Now, this is where it gets really cool with Klaviyo. They have a feature which is called the multi-step sign-up form. And what we can see here is when someone submits this form, okay, they opt into the list that we talked about, but now it's gonna go to something called the next step. This is great. And the next step on this form is called the SMS opt-in. Now what happens here is the person has already filled out the email subscriber section. We've captured their email address. We've sent them the code. So now we say, hey, why don't you give us your phone number and we're gonna send you some SMS only deals. So you can see it's already done here. Clavio has populated this for us. We can keep an image in here or we can get rid of that image. So we can style this pretty much the same. But really the powerful thing here is making sure that we get SMS only deals. This content here is absolutely fine, but what I wanna make sure that you've got in here is this consent text here. SMS is a real privacy issue, and we wanna make sure that we're not spamming people and we're complying with our local laws. So please make sure that you check these terms and conditions and they're suitable for your local area. Now, you also want to make sure that you link your privacy and your terms and conditions in here as well to your Shopify store. So from here, phone number's are already in there, that's great. Now, if you're in the US, we can default that to the US. If you're in places like Australia, like me, you might default that to Australia here, and you can see that goes there. So always default that one to your main country. Now the other thing here, hopefully you've guessed it, rather than just have a boring word like send, what we're going to do is we're gonna change this to the term, um, give me the deals, right? Something like that. Just so that they know what they're actually subscribing to. And also because thumbs are usually the things they're gonna be doing this, I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit and I'm gonna put it at the bottom here because I think that's gonna work a bit better. Awesome, yeah, that feels a lot better, okay. So you see what we're doing there? We've now captured an email address. We've now captured a phone number. And now what we want to do is say, thanks for joining us and now start shopping with us. So there's another section here, which is called the success page. And so we can see it says, thanks for signing up. Check your mobile device to confirm your subscription. Let's change that, okay? Let's go and write. Now you can go and check out some of our awesome products. Cool. And then we're going to add a little button here. You can do that by going back, clicking blocks. And so now we just drag a button over there. And instead of close form, we're going to change this to go to URL. And we're going to write in here, view our range. And we're going to link that through to our favorite collection. Just like that. Okay, cool. So once that's done, we're gonna click publish. And now we're going to create the coupon code. So let's click exit here. So we go to content and we click coupons. And if you're integrated into Shopify, you're now going to see create Shopify coupon. So let's click that one there. And we're gonna give this coupon name welcome. And we'll put a little prefix in here so that we know where this coupon has come from. We could just call it well, the welcome. Uh, and we're gonna give it a fixed amount. So on my store, it was gonna be $5 off and it's gonna be the entire order. And I do like to put in a minimum purchase. So we put something in like $50. 
The reason we do this is we make sure that we're sort of sticking to that 10% amount and people aren't buying $5 items and using a $5 coupon code. Now, if we scroll down, I do also like to have an expiration date on this. So I tend to say, 30 days and we then put this into a welcome flow and the welcome flow says here's your coupon code and then in 30 days time we send them a reminder if they haven't used the coupon code to use it and that's a really great way to get them back to the store. Once we've done that we just click create coupon. Now what happens here is that Klaviyo connects into Shopify and every time someone signs up to your pop-up it's going to automatically generate something called a dynamic coupon. Now that's going to be a random set of letters with the prefix at the front W-E-L. So now you'll know that every time that someone uses a code that starts with W-E-L they've come from this pop-up. Great guys, so you've got your pop-up form set up, you're integrated into Shopify, you've created a coupon codes, and now we're going to have a quick look and show you how to see whether or not a form is working really, really well. So if we go back to sign up forms and click the form we've just created. Now it says poor performance because it's a brand new form, but on the right hand side, we can see here form submit rate. So what we could do is we can click on this form and then over time, we're going to keep an eye on this form submit rate. What we're going to see here is the amount of people that have viewed the form and then the amount of people that have submitted the form, okay? So what we want to keep an eye on is we want this form submit rate to be at least 3%, but we're actually aiming for eight to 10%. So really keep an eye on this to make sure that people are actually submitting the form. Now, if they're not submitting the form and you're getting really low numbers, what we want to do is play around with the offer that you're giving them. We wanna play around the behavior, how soon the pop-ups are coming out, or even the style of pop-up that's coming out, whether it's a pop-up or a fly-out or a full page. I want you to play with all those different behavior settings to see whether or not we can get this form submit rate to go up. That's the way that I've done it. I've continued to optimize and improve my form submit rate by optimizing the way I display the pop-up, the types of offers that I give, and the timing between when the pop-up comes up. All right, guys, I hope you found this little tutorial useful. If you did, comment down below what you loved about it, what you got out of it, and whether or not it's helped you increase your form submit rate and increase the email subscribers and SMS subscribers that you have on your store. If you like this video, I'm sure you've already liked and subscribed it, but if you haven't, do that because I'm gonna be sending more out like this as soon as I get them recorded.